your name. Oh, Lord, we need you. Need you. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We thank you. Yes, for your Lord. presence, God. We thank you that yes, you're here Lord. with us, that you're always surrounding us. Yes, God, we feel your presence in the place. Yes, we Lord. thank you for what you're doing, oh God. We surrender our problems. We lay them at your feet for you know what to do with them. And we call you Jehovah Jireh. You yes, are a great God. We call you Jehovah Shammah. We call you Jehovah Rapha. You are a healer. So we have nothing to worry about because we can't be defeated. Yes, God, in Jesus' name, I ask that you bless those who are watching God, bless those who have even gathered to give your name the praise. Yes, God, Lord. be in the house today. We give you the glory. We give you the praise because the victory is already done. It's already won. We have the victory because you can't be defeated. God, we are more than conquerors, and we thank you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you, God, and we invite your presence into the house today, God. We give you the glory. We give you the glory for we can Cannot be defeated. Oh Lord, we need you. Yes, Lord. Oh Lord, we, oh Lord, we need you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we need you. Need you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, we need you. Need you. Oh Lord, we need you. God, we welcome you into the house today. Oh Lord, we. Need Our trust is in you. Our love is in you. Our faith Hallelujah. is in you. Oh, Lord, we need you. Come on, right where you are. Come on, just begin to declare, God, you're an amazing God. And that's why we say that you are the everlasting God. God, we'll remain hey. confident in this because we're sure to see your goodness. Come on, right where you are in your living room, hey. in your office space. Come on, just begin to open up your mouth and declare, God, I will remain confident in spite of what's going on around me, in spite of what's happening in my family, in spite of what's happening in the world today, in this will I be confident. One thing that I desire of the Lord is that 
which I seek after is that I may dwell in your house. Come on, just say, God, allow me to dwell with you. We don't want your hand, but we want to see your face. We want to experience your glory. Come on, everybody who's streaming with us, just begin to create a sanctuary where you are. Father, you're amazing. You're peace in the time of trouble. You're a healer. You're a provider. You're amazing, God. Father, we love you and we thank you and we honor you and we praise you. God, we lift up your name. And that's why we can say this. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I be? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I be? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. Say, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. And I like this next part. If you know it, help me say it. Stable and consistent. 
Treat everybody right. 
stay on the battlefield. Come on, just make that declaration. I will not falter. I'm not going to waver. I, I'm not going to waver. I'm standing on the promises of God. Come on, right where you are, just begin to declare that I will not fail in this. I will not fail in this. Come on, make that declaration in your home as you're streaming. I will not fail. Every last one of our needs are met. My family is whole. Come on, I'm staying on the battlefield. I will not allow depression to overtake me. I won't allow fear to overtake me. Come on, release that in the atmosphere in your homes. God, we won't falter. We won't get discouraged. But we remain confident. Come on, that's it. Lift it up. Lift it up. God, we speak confidence over our family. We speak confidence over our household. We speak confidence over our jobs. God, we release confidence in this place. Come on, just declare, I'm still confident. I still have joy. I still know God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask for thing. Hallelujah. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So good morning to all of us who are viewing on live stream, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you are finding us this morning. We are glad that you have decided to worship with us on this morning and be a part of our worship experience. It is good to be in the land of the living. My name is Reverend Shanta Williams, and here at Union Temple, I love being a part of this family. You are in for a powerful worship experience at Union Temple, where it is a family affair. It is a community affair. Lord God, we worship a universal God. We are all family, and hopefully you will see that as you experience this worship experience with us. If you are first-time guests with us, I invite you to take out your cell phone. And if you are a member and have not been receiving the text, I invite you to take out your cell phone and text the word WELCOME to 202-683-7925. Again, that is the word WELCOME to 202-683-7925. Two, five, and you will be a part of our family and that will keep you in touch with us. We have a few announcements because we will be worshiping virtually and this is our virtual schedule. On Mondays we have prayer and Tuesdays we have prayer from at 6 a.m. on the conference call we also have intercessors. The number is 563-999-2090. Again, for intercessory prayer during the week at 6 a.m., 563-999-2090. And the um, code is 983476. And the hashtag sign, 983476. In order to join on those calls. Sundays right now will remain a virtual experience. Um, you can dial in to hear the worship experience at that same number, 563-999-2090. Again, and the, to join would be 983476 with the pound or the hashtag sound, sign. We also have a corona crisis outreach. So if you are over 60 and in the high risk category, please call that number. Pastoral care office hours are from 12 to 2 p.m. Um, you can email cfhwilson at gmail.com. Again, that's cfhwilson at gmail.com to make a virtual appointment for pastoral care and spiritual support. And we also have millennial conversations with Minister Rasul for young adults 18 to 35-ish at 7 p.m. on Instagram at Union Temple B, Union Temple DC. And on Fridays, um, we have Storytime Online for Omni Kids at noon, Facebook Live at Union 
Temple, D.C., um, Deeper Dive Online Bible Study. We had a great online Bible study. It's at 7 o'clock, and it's on Facebook Live at Union Temple, D.C., and Zoom, and that's with Pastor Anika. And we have a teen kickback from at 3 p.m., um, Instagram at Union Temple DC, where Minister Naisha, myself, um, Davon, and Nurse Monique will be a part of that. So please, again, make sure that you text welcome to 202-683-7925 so you can be apprised of all of those announcements. Amen. And we're going to go into our scripture for this morning. Um, I'll be coming from 2 Timothy Um 2 Timothy 1, the message version, verses 1 through 5, and it reads, Paul, I, Paul, am on special assignment for Christ, carrying out God's plan, laid out in the message of life by Jesus. I write this to you, Timothy, the son I love so much. All the best from our God and Christ be yours. Every time I say your name in prayer, which is practically all the time, I thank God for you, the God I worship with my whole life in the tradition of my ancestors. I miss you a lot, especially when I remember that last tearful goodbye, and I look forward to a joy-packed reunion. That precious memory triggers another, your honest faith, and what a rich faith it is, handed down from your grandmother Lois to your mother Eunice and now to you. And the special gift of ministry you received when I laid hands on you and prayed. Keep that ablaze. The word of the Lord is blessed. And now we will be hearing from our pastor, Anika Wilson Brown. Hear ye her. Praise the Lord. Come on right where you are in your space. Just begin to say, I'm never defeated. Never defeated. I'm never defeated. never defeated. Come on, just begin to say it until you feel I'm it. Say, defeated. I'm never defeated. I don't care what it looks like, I'm never defeated. I'm never defeated. And just say, God, you are the greatest power. You have all of the victory in your hand. You hold our lives in your hand. Come on, just begin to meditate on that declaration. I am never defeated. I'm never defeated. Never defeated in my mind, in my body. I have full victory. Come on, just begin to raise your voices in your living room and just begin to say, God, thank you that I always win. Come on, say, never defeated. Come on, everybody, just say, never defeated. Come on, that's it. That's it. You begin to release that in the atmosphere. God, we thank you because we always win. Come on, that's it. Let's just take a few bit, few more moments. Come on, in your space while you're streaming. Come on, just begin to say, I'm never defeated. I'm never defeated. I'm never defeated. I'm never defeated. So I shall rise. I shall be. I shall go in victory because no weapon formed against me will never overtake me and because God is the greatest power we will never never be defeated and because God is the greatest power we shall never never be defeated come on say and be and be because God is the greatest is the greatest power come on declare that in your home say we, we shall never never be never be defeated and Come on, everybody, say, I shall, I shall rise. 
Come on, say, I shall, I shall, I shall be. be. Say, I shall go. I shall go. In victory. In victory. Now come on, declare, no weapon, no, no weapon. weapon. Against me. Say, and because God, because God is the greatest, is the greatest power, we shall, we shall never, never be, never be defeated. Come on, say, and because God is the greatest, is the greatest power, we shall never, we shall never, never be defeated. Come on, say it again, say, and because God. This next part, it simply says this. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. And that's why we'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. Come on, say that in your homes. God is exalted. I'll never be defeated. I'll never be defeated. Help me say the devil is, the devil is a liar. Come on, say that where you are. God is exalted. Say I'll never be, never be defeated. Say the devil is a liar. God, you're always exalted. Come on, say I'm never defeated. Never be defeated. Say the devil is a liar. Devil, devil is, is a liar. liar. Come on, say God. God, God is exalted. Say I'll never be, never be defeated. Come on, say never be, never be defeated. Say the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is, God is exalted. Say I'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. Say I'll never be defeated. Never be defeated. Say the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And because God, because God, he reigns forever. Reigns forever. And because God, because God, he rules forever. And because God, he's faithful forever. And because God, he reigns forever. And because God, he's mighty forever. 
never defeated. I'm never alone. I'm never alone. Come on, say that in your space. I'm never alone. Because he holds our hand. I'm never alone. God's by my side. I'm never alone. I always win. I always win. I always win. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. Never defeated. Yes, Lord. In your spaces, just begin to say, I'm never defeated. I'm never defeated. I'm never defeated. I'm never defeated. I am never defeated. I hear God saying, You are not alone. I hear God saying, Defeat is not in your DNA. I hear God saying, You've already won. I hear God saying, be anxious for nothing. Yes, Lord. Just open your mind and your heart and hear from God. God, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Say it. of us feel so alone. 
many of us feel so alone. We're longing to be connected. Longing to feel your presence. We're thankful because you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. That you be with us till the end of the earth. We stand on the word that you will be with us. You will strengthen us. Somebody is in an apartment by themselves. They don't have children they don't have a spouse they don't have anybody there present with them yes. but right now god i am speaking to their life letting them know that god is present with them yes, Lord. you're never you're never alone hallelujah yes Lord. i'll be with you I'll be with you. Yes, Lord. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. When everything else fades away, I'll be with you. When nothing else works anymore, I'll be with you. I'll be with you. I release your angels right now to minister to the needs of your people. Wrap your arms around us no matter where we are. We pray that the spirit would override the conditions of the heart. That you would cause us to feel connected to you and connected to each other. Connected to power, connected to resources and connected to everything you said we could have. And we say these things are so in Jesus name. Amen and amen. If you would just make that your mantra and your affirmation for this week, for this day, that you are never alone. You are, I just hear God saying, you are fully supported, fully covered, that I am with you. Amen. We're grateful today for the opportunity to share with you all and come to you in this way through thanks, through technology. We are just thankful for this opportunity and for divine presence, which we feel right now in this room. And we just pray that wherever you are, that God's presence is with you also. We are grateful for our musicians and our praise and worship ministry for blessing us and ushering us into the presence of God. Hallelujah. The word that I have for you today is very simple, and I hear my assignment as one to firm up, sure up your faith, to agitate you in a sense towards activating the faith that is within you. This text is one that is familiar that we've heard many times before, and it talks about the fact that you have a faith that's not even fully yours, the fact that there are ancestral remnants of faith that have brought you to this moment, that wouldn't let you give up, that wouldn't let you give in, that wouldn't let you give out. And that faith is at work in your life to the point that Paul preaches to his brother Timothy in this text to say, there are some gifts in you that have yet to be released. Can you say that about yourself? Just say, there are some gifts in me that have yet to be released. And he says to his brother, it's gonna take some bold faith. It's gonna take some bold faith for you to birth it and bring it forth. So I wanna to talk to you today about bold faith. And if I could put a subtitle on the message, I would say, this is the moment to make a move. This is a moment, the moment, to make a move. 
God bless us today. Be with us. Have your way in all that we say and do that you'll get the glory in this moment. Amen. One of the most exciting times of my life has been preparing for Christmas. And when you have children that are young enough to still have that childlike curiosity, that childlike faith and boldness and excitement about Christmas, that is a beautiful time to give to the children because they get so surprised and so excited about what is to come. One year in particular, I had the bright idea of getting an arcade size basketball game for the kids to enjoy. I thought it would be fun. I've seen it uh, at Dave and Buster's and various places in people's homes. Uh, and, and the game is a lot of fun to play. But the problem is that once I got my own uh, a, a full-size arcade version of this basketball hoop game at my home, uh, the problem was that it had a beautiful picture on the outside of the box, but when I opened it up, there had to be a thousand pieces of tiny little pieces that had to be put together to make this thing function the way that it was supposed to function. So I struggled uh, for many days to put this thing together without letting anybody know what I was doing. It took a whole lot of tasks and a whole lot of patience and a whole lot of energy for me to pack up this stuff each time as I tried to figure it out in the process. I came to tell somebody there are some times when uh, you have the big picture, you have the big picture, but it shows up in a thousand pieces. Uh, there are moments in your life when you have the big picture of what God is going to do and he shows you what the plan is, but when it arrives, it comes in tiny picture pieces. And it can be difficult in those moments when you have all of the tiny pieces to get focused on the big picture of what God showed you. It's hard to hold on to the promise when you, all you have in your hand is pieces. I can't get no help today. I said it's hard to hold on to the promise when all you have in your hands is pieces. And it is interesting so much so that, that as you're wrestling with the pieces, you can lose sight of the big picture if you are not focused in your faith. If your faith is not bold enough, bold enough to see stuff that ain't there, bold enough to speak to some things that are not in existence yet, bold enough to understand that although I might have pieces, there is a promise waiting on me. Can you just say to yourself in this moment, say, I need bold faith. I need bold faith to see what I can't see. I need bold faith to hear what I have not heard. I, I need bold faith to step out there and do what I have not done. It is the pieces of life that cause us frustration. Come on up in here. It is the pieces of life that antagonize us and cause us to be anxious. It is the pieces of life that distract us from the big picture of what God has shown us. And I don't think I'm stretching it today to say that there are some people in this room who are like me and knows what it's like to deal with pieces. That there are some people at home watching right now who, who you are like me. You've seen the big promise. You've seen what God has in store for you. But all you have in your hand is pieces. The pieces of a broken relationship. The piece of what's left of your finances, the peace of sickness in your body, the peace of trying to figure out what's next. But I came to tell somebody that is listening today that if you are willing to get bold in your faith, God will use what you have and cause it to be bigger than you've ever imagined. I dare you to just say it to yourself right now. God is doing something bigger in my life. I know I have pieces in my hand, but I'm about to have have the peace of God in my life. Oftentimes, the gift that God gives us requires faith to bring it forth. It requires 
hard work. It requires consistent intention and dedication. And, and Paul reminds us that in these times, we will be anxious. When what we have does not look like what God showed us, it is a time of anxiety. It is a time of fear. It is a time of frustration. But your encouragement today is to be encouraged to know that if God gave you pieces, God will make the provision. I need somebody to affirm that right now, that if God gave you pieces, he will give you the provision. I know some of y'all got trust issues. You don't, you don't trust God enough to trust that the little bit that you have is enough. You don't, you don't trust God enough to believe that where he brought you to uh, is also the place he's going to take you through. Uh, you don't have trust enough uh, to believe that what you have in your hands is enough. Uh, in fact, I dare you to boldly declare it. Uh, what I have in my hands uh, is enough. Uh, it might not look like a lot to you. It might not look like it's worth nothing to you. But little becomes much when we place it in the master's hand. I came today to speak to the spirit of panic, to speak to the spirit of hoarding. It almost got me for a minute. I found myself with stuff in my cart that I know I didn't need because uh, the panic will get you, the propaganda of panic will get you hype when you already know that God will provide. But this text says to us, this is the moment. Somebody say, this is the moment. This is the moment where the treasure that has been locked up in you is ready to come forth. Somebody ain't received that prophetic word, but I came to tell you that what you have on the inside of you is as good as money in the bank. What you have on the inside of you is as good as bills being paid. For God says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the, the good things that I have in store for you but it's time for you to stir it up it's time for you to wake it up it's time for you to fan the flames of your anointing it's time for you to stop playing small and settling for safe it's time for you to wake up the gift that's on the inside of you Fear has manifested itself in your daily life. You want to know how I know? Because of how you shrink every day. How you shrink on your job. How you may place more in your relationship. How you don't stand up and speak truth to power. How you have become timid in the gifts that are in you. you you're comparing yourself to everybody else. And you think that somebody else is greater than you are. But God said what I put on the inside of you uh, is about to be activated uh, in this time of panic, uh, in this time of frustration, uh, in this time of overwhelm, uh, God can bring good out of your pieces. God can bring good out of your pieces uh, at the moment of tragedy, at the moment of crisis. The first thing we do is shrink. The first thing we do is start panicking. The, the first thing we do is, is, is to respond like everybody else as if we don't have a savior. But God says, I put something inside of you that I am waiting to come forth. And I'm already at my first point. You better jump on this train before it leaves. My first point is this. Your gift is activated under pressure. I know you can't talk to nobody and you can't nudge and high five, but I dare you to say to yourself, my gift is activated under pressure. There's something on the inside of me that I can't contain. I can't shut it down. It's just like Superman. It's just like Wonder Woman. When, when I sense that God wants to use me, uh, there's something that starts stirring up in my belly uh, that won't let me be still because my gift is activated under pressure. This text shows us how cultivation and instruction and relationship can stimulate your purpose to come forth. How trouble
and distancing and rejection and crisis can actually cause you to step into the power, catch this, step into the power and faith of your mother and your grandmother. Y'all ain't hear what I said. I, I said crisis gives you the ability to transcend where you are and step into the faith and the power of your ancestors. I need you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you're more powerful than you know you are. You're more powerful than you think you are. There's somebody that interceded for you. There's somebody that prayed for you. There's somebody that laid hands on you. Before you even knew you was in the world, they mocked you for God's service. They anointed you for a great work. Now, don't you get here and get scared now. Look at somebody and say, be bold like your grandmama. Be bold like your mama. Don't you get here and get scared now. There's been a deposit placed on the inside of you. And I don't even care if you don't know who your mama and your grandmother are. It's in your bloodline for you to be victorious over everything you face in this life. Paul says to him, in these difficult times, catch it, in these difficult times, I'm reminded of the faith that your mother and your grandmother had. <laughs> He, he said, I, he said, I'm not, I'm not, I, he didn't start telling them about the good stuff he did. He didn't start telling them about the hookups he can get. He didn't start telling him about how he can get over. If he go to the store and buy a bunch of toilet paper and sell it to everybody else for $2 a roll. He, he didn't tell him how to get over. He told him how to tap in. Uh -huh. Somebody needs to understand how to tap in, how, how to tap into the authentic faith of your grandmother and your mother, the faith that's built out of personal relationship, the faith that's built out of connection, the faith that says my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name, on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand look at somebody and say it takes a bold faith it takes a bold faith a bold faith that comes up in times of pressure a bold faith that comes up in times when there is crisis you think it's your enemy aggravating you it ain't your enemy it's, it's your ancestors aggravating you it's your ancestors saying stand up do you not know who you are do you not know what I called you to do do you not know who you are when you are clear on your life, you understand that crisis is a catalyst. You understand that crisis is a catalyst to bring something out of you that ain't been seen yet. I'm preaching in here now. I'm trying to tell you crisis is a catalyst. Bring that book out of you that you've been thinking about. It's crisis is a catalyst. Bring that business out of you. That, that crisis is a catalyst to make you stop settling for less for people that don't know who you are. The crisis came to catapult you. This moment it's not the time to get scared this is the moment to get bold because your gift is agitated when you're under pressure the second thing i gotta tell you is your gift is amplified in times of crisis oh y'all don't hear me some of you are dreaming dreams you are hearing messages god is speaking to you you look at a tree at a cloud and you hear a message because when there is crisis God begins to release a message into the earth. And I came to tell somebody, you need to stop looking for the latest prophet and stop looking for a bishop and stop looking for somebody to lay hands on you and lay hands on yourself. Your grandmama say, up above my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Ah, uh, when your gift is amplified in a crisis, it causes you to be fearless. 
This is when people start saying you're stupid and it don't make sense uh, because it, it's like you're aware of what's happening, but you ain't tripping. It's, it, it's like I'm cognizant uh, of what's happening, but, but I can't go down that rabbit hole y'all going down because there's a gift on the inside of me uh, that tells me that this ain't over until God says it's over. There's a power on the inside of me uh, that says, though they slay me, yet will I trust him. There's a word on the inside of me that shifts to an offensive position. Ah, it doesn't just, it is not just a defensive word. It is an offensive word where it begins to go out and get everything that God said is yours. Uh, there's a dormant gift. There's a, there's a sleeping gift uh, on the inside of you. But God says, uh, don't sleep on your gift. Uh, don't sleep on what's in you. Uh, don't sleep on the power that's on the inside of you. Because your gift, your gift is going to agitate. It's going to birth forth. It's going to push you forward. It's going to cause you to hear what you have not heard. Some of you need to spend some time at your altar, more time than you ever have before. Spend, spend some time reading. Don't, don't fill up every second of your day with something to do. Uh, grandmama say, sit down somewhere and, and, and hear what you can hear. hear. Hear what God is speaking. Hear what God is telling you to do. There is a specific assignment on your life. So your gift, thirdly, agitates your purpose. Your gift causes you to begin to see yourself differently. Uh, Paul says, I, I, I need you to literally uh, step outside of this world for a minute. Uh, some of you feel foreign to this world anyway. You, you, things don't make sense. You, 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 God says, I'm calling you to separate yourself. I, I'm calling you to step outside of this world a little bit so that you can begin to operate in the path that I've called you to. It's, in fact, he says, the problem that you're going through right now is going to provoke your purpose to come out. It's going to provoke your power to come out. You're going to be clear on your assignment after this. Somebody say, after this. I'm going to be clear on my assignment after this. I'm going to have more money than I ever had after this. I'm going to be able to make sense out of the storm I just came out of after this. Somebody say, after this. A purpose shall be fulfilled. 